stay holy is by protecting the temple and keeping holy the temple that is you mm -hmm. Amen. and not running it into the into the ground <clears throat> because how effective are you going to be as a child of God <coughs> and as a minister if you have broken your temple and run it into the ground he says rest he says rest and our bodies will, will, will attest to that is that why they don't fellowship with Christians because we are uh, the mark of sin is, is that why what? is that why they won't fellowship with uh, believers that on Sunday there is a, um, possibly there is a kind of an anti-ecclesiastical idea. Some Baptist churches adopt that too, that they're, they, they are anti-ecclesiastical. They will not fellowship with other denominations or other Christians outside of their own church. Some denominations believe that they're the only ones that are saved and they won't fellowship with others as well. So I think that there is a division among the body of Christ and even those that are trying to fit into the body of Christ that really aren't. Uh, there is a there is a, di a division, and they will not fellowship with others. So there are some within and without the body of Christ, uh, the true body of Christ, that refuse to fellowship with with others. And I think that isn't biblical at all. I think that as uh, as uh, Petros, as little stones, as important as the body is, and every part and piece of the body that it works together, that it really, just the whole concept demands fellowship. Amen. And uh, with, with every other part of the body. But if we were to announce that the foot was no longer allowed or no longer necessary, then uh, how, would, how would the body carry the head to church? <laughs> or, or, you know, some other such idea or analogy. Okay, let's move on. What happens after death? Humans have no... <laughs> immaterial spirit so at death the body goes into the ground and the breath goes to God that word is pneuma which represents really the Holy Spirit of God Jesus breathed on his disciples in John 22 and he said receive the Holy Spirit of God the breath of God is life uh, but the breath of God, the pneuma of God, is the Holy Spirit of God. So, what does it mean that the body goes into the ground and the breath goes to God with no material resurrection and no immortal body? Nothing remains except in God's memory. And now this is interesting. God will recreate the righteous dead from his memory. So, God is a three-dimensional printer. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm not trying to be uh, minimize God in any way, but what? Uh -huh. God will recreate me based on his memory of me. He will recreate a righteous me based on his memory of me. So the only thing that God can remember, because God remembers not the sin, the only thing God will remember are the things that we did for him that were good. But our resurrected bodies are sinless. And so we are told that they are. They are like Christ. So we are not created by a memory of who we were. We are created like resurrected in the image of God. But we once were. Just in the, in the garden of the rest. That's my, my demanding of resurrection is that we will be saved in perfect Christ in body that were demonstrated and the resurrected that God resurrected. And I don't believe we were. I will just resurrect by a memory of who. They do believe in I do not believe sleep. They do, they do believe in soul sleep. We are not believe in soul in the body. I think the Lord, the Bible, is thorough awake. The part absolutely not present. We were in sleep. And is you awake in terms of the sleep? Paul just who's death of, uh, in that term uh, describes those that set as a term in that is that those uh, sleep do, do certain things do not uh, do certain don't sleep but sleep is a word we find the, a death sleep <coughs> to take away the state of uh, and the <coughs> transcape of the, of the death, death of death we don't middle of the night but I did or we go to heaven deep down in our spirit we sleep 
we are given a body. So those that die before the resurrection in the spirit, they are quite alive and they're awake in the presence of God or in the presence of hell, as we're saying. Or at judgment, the lake of fire annihilates the wicked. It doesn't annihilate the wicked. It consumes the wicked, it consumes the lost for all eternity. This is like saying that hell is simply a way of going out of existence. And that would be good. That would be good news for the sinner. But the fact is, is that God has said that the smoke of his torment will rise forever and ever and ever. And to say that, that judgment at the lake of fire will annihilate the wicked is to say that Satan and all of his angels who are in the lake of fire will also go out of existence. And yet the whole idea of hell was based on the death of, of um, Satan, and uh, not the death of Satan, but the casting into the lake of fire by Satan and his angels for eternal punishment, and that we who are lost would face the same. We are not annihilated. Hell exists. And this is some of that love winds talk that says that hell doesn't exist that is simply a blast furnace that annihilates or erases the soul, and that God then resurrects the righteous through a memory of such. Other practices at Seventh-day Adventist Church is God's one special end-time remnant church. No, the God's end-time remnant church is Israel. Um, Israel is the fulfillment of end-time prophecies, and the remnant that is talked about in the, in the book of Revelation is the remnant of the Jews that are saved or the remnant of Israel that is saved that makes God's uh, plan complete. And he is looking to Israel to save those that have rejected him. Not to reject everyone else. He's grafted us into that holy root and we are there too. But he saves a remnant of Israel, which is one-third of the uh, Jewish people that are alive at that time, two-thirds of them will die. But there is a third of the, of the Jews that are saved, much like God describes in the Word of God. Proselytizing programs include revelation seminars and health outreach. There is a, an individual that teaches seminars, and he sometimes will send these uh, five-by-nine flyers out to you, maybe you've seen them in postcard <coughs> where he has several classes on Revelation and other, uh, other end time stuff, and he holds them up at the, uh, the uh, Builders uh, Exchange building up in Red. This, this is backed by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and that's where he's been trained. He went through the college, and so the, the teaching is the Seventh-day Adventist teaching of end times prophecy. And so this is, this is what he is doing in obedience to their church uh, by having proselytizing programs including Revelation Seminars, which are a big deal for, for them. Okay. Old Testament, clean, unclean, meat laws observed. Well, in the New Testament, God worked that out. And he brought down that blanket for Peter to see with all of the animals and said that what I have said is unclean, do not tell me, or what I have said is clean, do not tell me is unclean. And he has given us permission to be carnivores. And went down. So they are denying God's word. God told Peter and us through, uh, through the scripture. It is from health message back include abstinence, add from alcohol to tobacco and caffeine. And that's good case veg. We should bake it. All that alcohol. I think we should advocate trustness from all that tobacco and bacon. Choice uh, and all these guys. I think that yeah, choice is just a free will because given us that or given us vegetables that to choose the meat is a mis the thing that is believed. But they commands something the word to promote it as a traditionalist uh, dentist traditionally traditionalist beliefs and very jewels sinful. Is it meant that we're so curious? Well, there were there were mentions in the Bible about Jewry and about the too much about and adorning our soul too much. Um, I think that there's nothing else to say in the Bible about Jewry being a sin. It's like saying that money is a sin. And, um, the abuse of it make you godly and it could be sinful as it may imply certain immoral uh, desires to overdo it. 
but wearing jewelry is not sinful. He talks about the bond slave that uh, is one that turns their life over to Jesus, a slave that's released at the time of Jubilee, and who decides that they want to be a slave to their master for all time. They love their master, and they wish to be to give their lives over. And in that, they would take the earlobe, and they would put it on the doorpost like that, and the master then would drive an awl through it and put a ring in it. And uh, the Bible has talked about these things and what they represent, uh, when when the servant of uh, Abraham had gone to retrieve a bride for, for Isaac, what did he have? He had bracelets and rings and all kinds of jewelry to put on ultimately Rebecca and bring her home as someone who was going to be the wife of, uh, of Isaac. Is that sinful? Huh, because God had made a way for that to take place. And there was nothing in grace that introduced the sin of jewelry. So there wasn't an Old Testament, New Testament, trans Testament transition that changed any sort of law about jewelry. The only things that the Bible talks about is not overdoing it. And for women not to over adorn themselves uh, because it, it, uh, it brings on uh, unrighteous desires and uh, you know, such as prostitutes and, and that sort of thing. So women are to be careful how they adorn themselves, and so are men. But women can can bring about a certain desire, and uh, and God God warns against that. He, I was trying to think of the scripture that He talks about. Uh, it, it might hold on. Let me get it for you. It might be in First or Second Timothy, but let me just find it real quick. Okay, here it is. It's uh, in Second Timothy three, and from such people turn away. Talking about all of the things that I hear in the last and days, always learning or and never able to. to. Or and those who the knowledge of the households, in other words, captives of gullible uh, women, women that are being loaded down with uh, sins, but that we have been being very blessed, always learning and never able to uh, apply for the process of knowledge and fear. In other words, and, and seduction, uh, women that are being uh, moral uh, sins, sexual sins, captive and being seduced with such things, talking to her life, those processes, but not wearing jewelry, seduction. Moral <coughs> sin, sexual sin, about yeah, you know, that's the source of what <laughs> and and we talked about. A woman or in terms of those kinds of things, but there's not a big wearing jewelry mask, right? And, 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 and and I'm not trying to hand on sugar system or something that makes it sound as weird as And then I'm saying, is this better or better or not? They're at the threshold of the process in terms of what God says is okay and what might be too much. And what does mean do in terms of presentation? And I think that's why women get such a bad rap when there's a rape. And sometimes there are people in this world, sometimes men, that will begin to blame the woman for looking a certain way. Well, why were you out so late? Why were you dressed that way? I think that it's not about how they look. It's about the evil heart of a man that would be drawn to that woman, that would create, an, uh, that would assault her that way. That's on him, and that's his sin. But sometimes I think people have to be careful uh, what they do, and so that they don't attract uh, evil to them. And I have to be careful how I say that. I'm not, I'm not denouncing this at all. I'm just trying to bring some understanding to what they're saying and what the, what the Bible says. Okay, so that's, that's all that we have on the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we go into the Unification Church. As you can see in this section from the index there, there is so many more that I want to talk about. Uh, Christian science, New Age, Scientology, Islam, uh, three types, a Sunni, Shiite, and the Nation of Islam. The Baha'i faith I mentioned, Judaism, Hinduism, Hare Krishna, uh, TM, Sikhism, Buddhism, and uh, what the Bible says about these things. We go into the Unification Church. As you can see in this section from the index there, there is so many more that I want to talk about. Uh, Christian science, New Age, Scientology, Islam, uh, three types, a Sunni, Shiite, and the Nation of Islam. The Baha'i faith I mentioned, Judaism, Hinduism, Hare Krishna, uh, TM, Sikhism, Buddhism, and then what the Bible says. They, oh, wow. Okay. So I will, I will definitely get that, that on the way. This happened to me when I was first doing these conferences at Red Christian Fellowship. 
And I had one, you remember the first and second one that I had to take on for like a week and a half, but uh, it was a week of Sundays or something, but it was a long time, but it was, it was good. But there's a lot to talk about here, and I really don't feel comfortable just sending it home with you without having some talk, some talking points. Any comments or thoughts from the audience? John? Or uh, the Seventh-day Adventists, are they going to be in heaven or no? <laughs> okay, let me answer that question this way. Because we're not, we're told in Romans not to judge. Those that are going to be in heaven are those that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what they call themselves, they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus is Lord, that he died on the cross, that God raised him from the dead. Ephesians 2, uh, 10, um, 9 and 10 says that they will be saved. That's who's going to be in heaven, John. Not the seven-day Adventists, not even the Christian church. It's those that are part of the body of Christ through salvation. Is there another question or thought? Yes. Yeah. Just like, because I have some friends that are Catholic. I have, I have some friends that are Catholic. And I've been some friends that are busy. Like, it's always like some kind of computer that wants to me exactly what we some of them believe. Do believe some of them don't believe. Gee, some of them I still believe the Savior in and the Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, the Christ, the whole, but most of them don't. So, you know, not like some of my truths say yeah. that it's on Christ who said we believe and not only that you can judge what they really know well, their heart. Well, I'm just going to I'm just going to react to the tenth that is all that they're not the only and they are not answering that they are ever Christian. Catholic Church say a huge power field. The, and there are numbers of born again mission people that love and have the church in terms of the ceremony and the public <coughs> circumstances and the, and the ceremony of uh, rituals uh, in, in their mass kind of that sort of thing. Rich, that's how they run. That's what they feel comfortable with, but they, they have come to know Christ through the word of God. But if you're approaching looking for God, the rule that you underline and undergird what it means to be a Catholic, I know they're not going to heaven. If and I'm not saying that in judgment of them. I'm not the one that's not judging them. But if you look at their tenets, if you read the rules, you might say, read the 700-page document of what it means to be a Catholic, then uh, I would say that, by and large, they're not saved. They're not taught to be saved. They're not led to be saved. They're not led to believe like we believe. But there are many that do. And so uh, I know that that's a harsh statement, but I don't know how to answer that any other way. Is there any other thoughts or anybody want to shoot me? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, you know, Jesus Christ said, unless you are born again. So, yeah. you know, that's well, again, we, you know, the answer to John is the only ones that are going to heaven are those that receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But if they are caught up in a, in a religious system that doesn't teach that, how will they come to know that? And, uh, and we can be held captive to the rules of religion and never even meet Jesus personally. And we can be religious, very, very religious, and not in Jesus. I just want to say from my heart, thank you so much. You have cleared up so many questions for me, and it's been great, and thank you. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for saying that. Um, I, I, want to, I want to say also, as I get back to you, as you've written your addresses and emails down, um, or your phone numbers and emails down, I'll get back to you this next week with a new, some new dates. Um, also, um, I just want to remind you that my wife and I are going on a mission trip through Agape Family Fellowship. We are doing a fundraiser in, uh, in uh, January. Uh, we're, having a, we're putting on a, quite a dinner at Reading Christian Fellowship with uh, um, some great stuff that are going to be happening there. If you're interested in being a part of that or having dinner with us, I can send you uh, maybe write down or let me know and I can send you the information, or you can just go to my website. You can you can punch in Friend for Life Ministries, friendforlifeministries.com, or Agape Family Fellowship International.org, and go to the Africa fundraiser page, and uh, you can find uh, you can find all the information on there. So I am I am uh, taking donations for that and taking. Uh, 
uh, love offerings for uh, the expenses, of course, that Kevin mentioned yesterday. I know that many of you did, and thank you very much. I'm just closing now, and I'm asking, just putting it out there, that that we are um, the Friend for Life, the Agape Family Fellowship, and the things that I do are supported by uh, by you, and uh, I don't take a salary from the church. So that's a that's a, that sounds like a shameless plug, but I just got to say it how it is. So God bless you. Thank you so much for being here and actually giving me another half hour tonight. And I will uh, I will work this out so we can go through the rest of these and have some more uh, good conversation about the uh, uh, false uh, cults and the false religions out there. All right, Father, thank you for our time. Thank you for your word. And thank you, Lord, for making it real for us so that we might know who we serve and who we are and where we are in our hearts. We love you, Lord, and we don't ever want to be seen as someone who hates or judges others by what they believe. But we do have to be fruit inspectors, and we do have to call out Satan when he comes and gets involved in the hearts of people. So, Lord, continue to teach us. Touch us in our hearts so that we know, and especially when we see a loved one that's going down the tubes because of a false belief. Help us, Lord, to, to save, to, to catch that person and give them the truth in, in love and not in judgment, in love. Lord, only you can do that. And, and we love you and we thank you for the ability to, uh, to teach us in such a way that we can teach them. Thank you, but not be condescending. So thank you, Lord, for the time. Thank you for the words that you've given me to share. Thank you for this information. We pray this in, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. and I've got his children. Amen. 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 Amen.